You're about to see a robbery that's extremely nostalgic. It's a brand new robbery, but it elicits a feeling of nostalgia. It reminds me of the first Fast and Furious movie where they were stealing DVD players. These gentlemen are attempting to steal this TV off the wall, which I find super odd because no one really steals TVs anymore. They're very hard to move, they're less expensive than something smaller like an iPhone, and just really don't see a lot of TVs being stolen anymore. But these guys must be like thieves that time traveled from the early 90s to late 2019, and they're just confused by the scary future. But you know, they see TVs like, shit, they still got TVs. Yeah, boys are back in action, let's steal this bitch, that's probably still worth it. Unfortunately, the security camera doesn't capture any sound, but if it did, you'd probably be hearing the Benny Hill theme being played over the loudspeaker, and this guy right here that's fucking DJ turntabling the TV on the wall shouting for help. Luckily, there was a vigilante in the area hearing the cries, but I guess those windows must be clean as shit because he thought that one was open instead of the broken one next to him, so he hits that like a dog trying to come inside by hitting a glass door. The cavalry arrives, and they get their third friend opening the trunk, which is just very overconfident thinking they're actually going to get this TV off here. And this must be just the slipperiest goddamn glass of all time. It's like they're on an ice skating rink. Now finally, after windmilling the TV for 30 seconds, they finally rip that bitch off the wall and luckily break it immediately so they get nothing out of this and they keep slipping and sliding all over the place. It's like there's fucking butter on the bottom of their shoes. Then finally, the mastermind, the supervillain, the real muscle behind the operation hops in the driver's seat and peels out. They may have left empty-handed, but at least their pride is intact. Their spirits were probably still high, and I imagine they drove away looking for the nearest Radio Shack or Blockbuster to rob next. Let's go through this one more time and watch the slippery bandits in action again. I've mounted a few TVs in my day, but I've never seen one with this kind of range of motion. I I've never seen one that you could spin like a fucking washing machine. His tactics also don't make sense, because he's going with it, he's trying to like unscrew it and then kind of like kickflip off it. I don't even know if these two guys know each other. This guy comes from way downtown, like out of fucking nowhere for a surprise RKO. I can't imagine that they plan to be this far away from each other. This might just be like a really nice coincidence, like shit, I was trying to rob this place too, fuck it, this guy's already here, let's try and help. Damn, we're not strong enough to help. And it's super slippery. No doubt his hands are sliced up from landing on that glass, but he's a trooper, so he, let, he doesn't let the pain bother him. He goes and rips that TV off. At this point it wasn't about stealing it, it was about teaching the TV a lesson. You don't fuck with the slippery bandits. That fucking TV thought it could make these guys look stupid? Unbelievable. No one makes these guys look stupid. I don't know if they got caught or anything, but I imagine if they did, they'd probably just immediately go to jail and hope that the video never surfaces. Like, they're in the fucking courtroom. Uh, I didn't do it. Well, we have video. You did it. Fuck it. Don't show it. I did it. Just please don't show it. It's gotta be real fucking embarrassing. But yeah, that's it. See ya. Good, good. Okay, when the police get it, we'll see. Yeah? We'll see, okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think the police are gonna be on his side if you're stealing. It's a law, I guess. Go ahead, and watch what happens. I can't tell if the, like, she's an age illusionist. I can't tell if she's, like, early 20s or late 40s. Even her mom and dad are like, well, she kind of deserves it. No. No, no. Oh, God. The demon's coming out? He's got her with the holy takedown. <laughs> Don't fight him either. Stop it. Thanks, referee. You're being filmed, man. Watch your Wait. Mouth. Watch your mouth. Be a gentleman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who she is, coach? Remember your training. This is not the way of the force. <laughs> God bless the cameraman, finally. This dude deserves employee of the month here. Graphic warning, that's... <laughs> Suspect gets naked as meat falls from his pants. That certainly does sound like Florida. If I was confident in their blurring ability, I would watch that, but I'm not. Sophisticated All right, they just crash the car another. through the when front and just start grabbing shit. Say is an Melinda Ford, aka Puffy, is about to hit the dressing room of a Bell's department store in Florida. Right now, That's fucking awesome. Room. She's like I'm a kingpin. In the store. Last year Shit. we were given access to an it's puffy. unfolding investigation to a crime Stealing another $40 in shirts. And, and That's why Sergeant Jim Ostacek from Ooh, the, the Sarge. Sheriff's Office has spent nearly a No shoplifter has ever survived an encounter with the Sarge. Investigators say if they can flip Puffy, they're betting they can round up the returner. This is like Sly Cooper too. The whole booster ring. And radioing their movements to officers outside 
waiting in the But how dangerous is Puffy? The subjects are now exiting the store. She learns that Pee-wee's double crossed her, so she takes her out to like a crocodile infested swamp with an assault rifle. Vehicles moving. Their own share of substance. We've got you now, Puffy. Pull over Puffy and Pee-wee right into the station's parking lot. Puffy comes out with dual katanas. Puffy is escorted. Police say Puffy finally seems to crack. Oh, they broke Puffy? Puffy and she's snitching? Everybody in her virtual role oh, and shit. She's gonna go to them one police. He will be like the only now she's signed as like the lieutenant of the police force. I never thought that what I did was this serious. Stealing? It's very serious. Well. It actually is an organized crime. Puffy, who <laughs> I mean, two year plus ten years of it is stealing. Like, it's pretty, work, helping it's pretty well known to not be good. Suspected returners claim she paid to return for stolen merchandise. Damn, that car is out. Her Since husband just left. Fuck you, Carol. Is also one of them. Damn, this is like the end of an Ocean's Eleven. Twenty-four months of probation. God damn. Don't tell me it's filmed like this. Much better. Put a finger in his asshole. It'll calm him down. It's like a human cheat code. You're not getting away from us, dude. That's what you think. Right now, he's doing a huge brain scheme where he's sweating and getting it all over his body, making him slippery, and he'll slip right out. I feel like I'm watching the MMA right now with some little ground and pound action, but much slower. You're going to jail, man. Please help me. No, you're going to jail. <laughs> he's getting arrested for having a man bun. Yeah, he didn't steal anything, he just don't like the man bun. Right it's not a man bun, this is called the top knot, by the way. Hats off to these three dudes for not getting bored of just, like, holding this guy. A little dance with him. Don't come back to this target, you heard? He just he gets hit by a car. Why is it called held at gunpoint? Oh, it's not over yet. What the fuck? This is 12 minutes? What the fuck? What is he- does he come back to steal more shit? But this time wearing a mask? Why'd you let him go? Oh, he lives across the street. The wow, the cops are a little late. Oh, he went to steal somewhere else? Bro, this cameraman's getting so much action in one this. night. Send the cameraman the in to negotiate. Guys, so it's an assault. Why is he hiding behind a gas pump? <laughs> You never know what the shoplifting guy is capable of. He might start tossing Molotov cocktails out of the chimney or something. He's unpredictable. Is there, even, is, is there even anyone in there? The shop owner looks very calm. And he's just jogging around, hanging out. What What is happening? I thought he had taken hostages. He dressed up as the storekeeper. <laughs> Yeah, like hit hit man disguise. He knocked out the storekeeper and put on his disguise. Well, where the fuck is he? Is there even anyone in there at this point? They got the wrong address. They meant to go to the target. Oh, this is fun. Uh, everyone here is having a good time. He flushed himself down the toilet. He's already getting trained by Master Splinter in the sewers now, yeah. He's gonna come out an even stronger shoplifter. There he is! I see him! That's the guy! Run back to the target! You're safe there! Jesus, they got a helicopter out here for a shoplifter? Shit must be boring as fucking Sherman Oaks. Finally, some action! I don't care if you only stole five packs of Yu Gi Oh cards. Call everyone, get them all out there. Yeah, I'm just pretty fucking mad and wanted to vent. 
Florida is America's asshole. It fucking sucks here. I have left my house three times in the last four months thinking that by doing this very simple act that an actual fucking baby could accomplish with minimal whining, that the coronavirus cases would start to slow down, kind of like they have everywhere else in the world. But Florida is full of so many brainwashed, vapid, revolting, idiotic ghouls that it's not only increasing every day, but setting new records every fucking day for the coronavirus here in Florida. We just hit a new record of 15,000 new cases a few days ago. We've been getting more than 10,000 cases a day for quite a while now. Today's actually been an extremely good day. Florida's on the uh, the turnaround right now. We're, we're making big moves. Today we only had 9,000 new cases clocked, but we also had a record number of deaths for a single day. So you win some, you lose some. It's a give or take, and uh, hey, we'll, we'll fucking take those. We can't stop copping dubskis down here in Florida. Bunch of fucking dumbass ghouls here. At cracked out, methed out fucking idiots in this state that read Facebook and then translate these goddamn stupid memes that someone started that's probably locked in a shit stained basement and for some reason believe that reptilians are controlling viruses and now they take it and transfer it to the real world and it actively hurts everyone around. It is such a fucking upsetting circumstance in this godforsaken state. If you can even call it a state. I don't think Florida's a state. This is a goddamn laboratory. And what we manufacture here is coronavirus. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, when's coronavirus gonna end? Can't wait for coronavirus to be over. Fuck you. I promise you, for as long as Florida exists, coronavirus will not only exist, but will absolutely thrive. We are a coronavirus farm. More than that, we're a coronavirus fucking personal trainer. We're teaching coronavirus how to become better and more effective by just being really fucking stupid. And, but, you know, it's not all bad. To be fair, there's actually a lot of good news in Florida. We just reopened Disney World, so, you know, the, the world of dreams, baby. The, the Magic Kingdom is in full effect again, baby. So come on down. There's never been a better time to visit Disney World during a pandemic. My dog probably understands more about coronavirus than these fucking stupid people that are out on the streets protesting it and shit. Now, speaking of anti-mask protesting, let's go ahead and take a look at one that happened yesterday. Let's see what kind of high IQ intellectuals we're dealing with at these uh, protests. So one brave hero opened a grilled cheese restaurant and said, we don't care about masks, you don't need them here. So the police came in because masks are kind of a big deal and said, hey, you need masks. And that's when all hell broke loose. Jesus Christ, blood, tits, and cum was flying everywhere in the restaurant. Children are being snapped in half, taken over their knee, and just busted right in two as the people were shouting, stand down, stand down, fighting against tyranny. Something you'd read about in the Bible. Good versus evil, mask versus no mask, the clash of the titans. The abominable anti-mask troglodytes in one unified voice said, we wanted grilled cheese, and we didn't want to put something over our face, God damn it! It is our right as Americans to not wear a mask in a grilled cheese restaurant. Now, I'd be a fool to think any of these anti-maskers are literate, so I don't expect any of them have ever read a history textbook, but I find it almost humorous how identical this is to McCarthyism, if those of you that don't know McCarthyism was pretty much a point in American history where a man named McCarthy would accuse people he didn't like of being a communist, and people are doing that exact same thing with people they don't like that are wearing a mask, or just in general things they don't like. I don't want to do this, that means it's communism. Oh my goodness, what is that over your face? Is that cloth? How can you breathe? You're suffocating yourself, you communist. No, I won't wear a mask, you communist. Guarantee half these people can't spell communism. But I do actually find it interesting how history repeats itself. I know growing up you'd always get told, oh, we have to study history so it doesn't repeat itself, but I always thought that was a load of dog shit because I mean, it didn't make sense to me. Why would history repeat itself? But now I see I was just outright wrong, and it does actually seem to repeat itself, which is pretty fucking wild. You want to call me selfish for not wearing a mask? I want to say to you, yes, all the Rachel, people calling me selfish, trial. you're the one who's trying to yes. force me a medical procedure so Thank you me. can feel more That's safe. Chris, I don't only want to call you selfish. I'd also like to call you a homunculus. I think if pathetic was a person, it'd look a lot like you, Chris. Out here striking like an Uncle Sam pose here, calling putting a mask on your face a medical procedure. 
Yeah, you're not only selfish, Chris, you're also very dumb. The lack of self-awareness is actually remarkable, calling her a Karen when he's out here dressed like one of those overly handsy middle school gym teachers that eventually gets busted for being inappropriate with the students and making this huge hoobla about taking one second out of your morning routine to put on a mask before going to stuff your fucking face with 3,000 calories at a greasy grilled cheese restaurant. Yeah, she's the Karen, Chris. Hi, Chris and Tara. Uh, you're not actually up against people. You're up against a virus. You see, this fucking misinformation is turning people on each other. Mask versus no mask people, as opposed to the actual issue at hand being the virus. These people like to believe that they're not perpetual failures, but in reality, they are. And they're also sheep. They hate sheep, but they themselves are actual, real sheep. They blindly follow mysterious posts on Facebook that somehow always find a way to draw a divide between people. I'm not one to subscribe to many conspiracy theories, but I firmly do believe that there is an outside force manipulating these really gullible idiots like this into transferring the actual issue from a virus to other people. So that way if you have them distracted and don't give a fuck about the virus, just have them attacking other people, you can just cause a lot more chaos that way. And I really feel like that's the goal with a lot of the shit on Facebook. I really do think Facebook in and of itself is just an actual virus as well. It should be labeled a pandemic too. It is a truly festering, disease-ridden cesspool. There's a few more clips from this anti-mask rally, but it's just more of the same diarrhea drivel from someone else's mouth. I think what's even the saddest part about this is more and more people across the world keep laughing at Florida and the people in Florida, and that only cements their belief that they're right even more. It's such a weird, it's a weird circumstance where the more they get mocked, insulted, laughed at, berated, belittled, it makes them more powerful and cements their beliefs even further, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Who likes to get ridiculed? Why? It's weird. It's like people in Florida have a humiliation fetish. Like maybe they're putting something in the water to turn everyone here into some kind of like humiliation craving cuck. I don't really know, but it's genuinely fucking baffling how people can be so content to just get constantly made fun of in every corner of the world. Nobody respects Florida right now, and for very good and very obvious reasons. But those reasons, and that actual just laughing at and mocking, is making them believe it even more. It's crazy, and sad, and fucking frustrating, and it's, it's all that's been on my mind for like the last week, so I just wanted to get it all out of my system here and vent about it. That's about it. So yeah. yeah, there's not a whole ton to be proud of when it comes to Florida and the people in it. Like half the people here think using sunscreen is going to send you straight to hell. So with that in mind, let's see what Florida people are up to when it comes to coronavirus and the controversial topic of wearing a mask. You literally cannot mandate somebody to wear a mask knowing that that mask is killing people. It literally is killing people. Yeah, this is why it's so easy to scam people these days because everyone just wants to feel special. So they just will believe anything at all that puts them in a category that's different from others, no matter how fucking wrong it is. Like this claim right here, you can immediately disprove that mask masks are killing people with a two second Google search, but it doesn't matter because she believes it. She saw it on Facebook and now she 100% believes it and will not hear the actual truth. That's why people are buying fucking special rocks that they're told blocks Wi-Fi, which they're told, you know, exposure to Wi-Fi over time will cause your nipples to fall off. And they don't bother to do any research on it. They just stick in this fucking disgusting echo chamber on Facebook and believe things like masks are killing people. And my, the people, we the people, are waking up and we know what citizen's arrest is because citizen's arrests are already happening, okay? And every single one of you that are obeying the devil's laws are going to be arrested. And you, 
doctor are going to be arrested for crimes against humanity. Whoa, calm down there, Judge Dredd. Jesus Christ, she's out here being the judge, jury, and executioner. Uh, threatening a citizen's arrest, that's serious. You know, a citizen's arrest, I think, has been pulled off successfully zero times in the entire history of that fucking thing's existence. I'm pretty sure citizen's arrest was started as a joke. And then they just kept it there as a joke. Threatening to citizens arrest somebody is like threatening to shoot laser beams out of your eyeballs at somebody. It's a threat that you just laugh at. Every single one of you have a smirk behind that little mask, but every single one of you are going to get punished by God. You cannot, you cannot escape God. You cannot escape God. I'm going to say that again. You cannot escape God, not even with the mask or six feet. Okay? Damn, and here I thought I was safe with my six feet, but I guess God has an answer to everything, huh? He can counter pretty much every move? What a shame. Well, as you would expect, uh, the majority of people that are against masks think that it infringes on their God-given oxygen. Because apparently when they put on a mask, they like suction cup it to their face and suffocate themselves or some shit. I don't know how the fuck they wear a mask unless they're like duct taping it around their face until they pass out. I, I couldn't tell you. But you're going to see that argument a lot in this council meeting here today. Six feet, like I said before, is military protocol. You're trying to get the people to train them so when the, the cameras, the 5G comes out, what? They're, they're going to they're gonna scan everybody. We got to get scanned. We got to get temperatured. The kids have to go to school with masks. Are you insane? Are you crazy? Yeah, are you guys crazy? Are you insane? This lady's out here, very knowledgeable, spitting some facts right in front of you. And you have these devilishly crazy ideas like 5G. Like, oh my god. I'm actually pretty sure this lady is an android constructed by Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg himself created her in a lab and just compiled every fucking garbage Facebook conspiracy and belief and put it all into one person and then unleashed her on this council meeting in Florida just to test it out. I think all of you should be in a psych ward right the heck now because none of you, none of you know what the hell you are all talking about. This is insane. And then you want to open this meeting with a prayer to God. Are you praying to the devil? Because God is not listening to that prayer because all of you are practicing the devil's laws. What happened to Bill Gates? Why is he not in jail? Why is Hillary Clinton not in jail? Why are all of, the, all of these pedophiles that are demanding you all to, to listen to their rules, why are they not in jail? Oh, is it because you're part of them? Thank are you, you part of the deep your state? Time has the deep state is going down. And if any of you are morning. in the deep state, you're going down with so the female Alex Jones goes on a full-fledged rant there. Unfortunately, they cut her off before she got into the interdimensional time-traveling psychic vampire werewolves, but I'm sure she'll come back for the next meeting to discuss that. To see this woman in the condition she's in where her brain has been rotted by Facebook is actually pretty sad, if I'm being honest. She clearly takes everything she sees on Facebook at face value, no matter how outrageous it is, fucking bringing up Bill Gates and shit like that. What I'm hoping for, though, is in the next couple months, we can see an explosion of the reptilian movement, because at least that shit is entertainingly stupid. Not dangerous, you know? For those that don't know, the reptilian conspiracy is people that believe that there's lizard people, lizard people among us that hide as human beings, and they'll talk about, like, zippers on the side of their face and shit like that. The reptilian one is great. And I'll quote you, Miss McKinley. You said, if you don't like the rules, shop somewhere else. Well, after today, I won't have that option anymore because I am discriminated on every single time I tell somebody that I have a medical condition that does not allow me to wear a mask. Another passionate speech is given here and another misguided person is led astray thanks to the internet. As you can see, the person behind her is holding up an anti-vax sign talking about the dangers of vaccines. So, I mean, this is kind of the clientele you're dealing with when you're presenting this kind of shit at a council meeting. But it is sad. And apparently everyone in the entire fucking world that uses Facebook has a medical condition that prevents you from wearing a mask. I guess just using Facebook is a disease in and of itself that inhibits the person's ability to fucking breathe anymore, apparently. It's super weird how everyone who reads that rubbing essential oils in your butthole is gonna heal you of coronavirus somehow also has an unspecified, undiagnosed medical condition that prevents them from wearing a mask out in public. Super fucking weird. 
You are not God, and since masks are harmful, where there is risk, there should be choice. You're removing our freedoms and stomping on our con constitutional rights by these communist dictatorship orders or laws you want to mandate. Today, you have the ability to show your residents that you truly care. Because if you do vote to mandate masks in a workplace, in public, in schools, or stores, the death of many will be on your hands. The overwhelming evidence that is being presented to you today in no way, shape, or form can con consciously allow you to put your citizens at health at risk. Voting yes to mass mandates makes no scientific sense. Ah uh, yes, some very compelling evidence was being presented today, such as Masks are bad, that's the work of the devil. What about Bill Gates? Are you kidding me? This is God's air. What the fuck is happening? You want to 5G us? Yeah, that's some real good evidence right there. I, I just can't even fucking wrap my head around it. They, they convince themselves that they're making good points. It can, it's like they don't even hear themselves talk anymore. It's wild. It's wild. It's like using Facebook over time, like, rips your soul out of your body and you just become like this husk. Like this clueless fucking husk of a person. These fucking people, have they never seen a doctor? And nurses, doctors in the hospital setting, they fucking wear masks for six, eight hours a day. These people have probably never put a mask on in their goddamn life. They lack object permanence. Like if you put a handful of dollar bills, like if you put five dollars in your hand and put it behind your back, they probably think it's not even there anymore, that it's just fucking vanished. They're like goddamn children. They see a mask over your face and they think you can't breathe. It's so silly. Keep taking the road of least resistance. Keep listening to the TV brainwashing you from birth. Keep listening to conditioning messages in your local stores while shopping, just like Fidel Castro did over the loudspeakers in Cuba. Don't you see the problem? The truth is out there. Just go seek the truth. Yeah, the truth is out there. Go seek the truth. As long as it's the truth that I found on Facebook. I always love that sentiment from people like this. Go do real research. No, no, not that research from like scientists and shit. I'm talking about like actual research, you know, from like Facebook meme pages that are run by a dude in his fucking shit stained underwear in his 40s. That he actually knows what he's talking about, not these experts. These experts are fucking clueless. They're propaganda machines. And do real, real research at Facebook. My concern, since I do have a medical condition that I cannot wear a mask, you are taking food away from my table. Now that is an absolutely great point. Hey, while you're on your phone, why don't you download like Uber Eats or some shit like that, or one of the million other apps that deliver food to your door. That way you can still get those precious nutrients on your table without being a big fucking nuisance to everyone else around you. And they want to throw God's wonderful breathing system out the door. You're all turning your backs on it. Yeah, I found the entire stream all six and a half hours, and this is the only time it buffered. It's like what she said was so shocking that even the video itself had to take a pause to process it. Turning our backs on God's beautiful breathing system. You know, what, what can you even say about that, honestly? God made it so that we would breathe, breathe in fresh oxygen to go to our body, to every cell in the body. It has to have that to make energy. When you wear a mask, the nose is cut off, the mouth is cut off, and you're breathing carbon dioxide over and over and over again. You're not getting the fresh oxygen that God intended. You're sending carbon dioxide to every cell in the body, polluting it. I'd like to say, in the beginning, God formed man out of the earth and breathed his breath in him, and he became a living soul. And God gave us the very breath that we are to breathe. I would also like to know, where do you get the authority to reduce my oxygen? Who made you perpetrators over my life? Jesus Christ, there isn't some kind of invisible goblin unit that's stealing oxygen away from you and giving it to the government. It's a fucking mask. And ma'am, as a doctor, I really have many question marks about your degrees and what you really know. Because what you say is the political dogma that they're trying to shove down our throats on every commercial and every store, and it's disgusting. And I'm sorry, ma'am, but I don't think that you are worthy of your credentials. And I would ask suggestively that you go back to school and get educated. Yeah, why don't you get educated like this perfectly sane woman here who was talking about how God breathed into people's assholes in the beginning of time or something. Why can't you be more knowledgeable and smart like this woman? 
to put masks on our face, to keep us from breathing oxygen, to get us to become sickly. Actual fucking toddlers with a little tantrum. No, I'm not eating my vegetables. No, how dare you make me eat my vegetables? That's not fair. You can't make me eat these vegetables. I don't want to eat these vegetables. Same fucking thing with this mask debacle here. How can you make a one-size-fits-all mandate? Are you considering the following? I've been a music teacher for 23 years. I need you to tell me how do I play a saxophone and sing with a mask on? I'll let you think about that. Checkmate. Yeah, masks are a bad idea. She can't play the saxophone. I don't know why we didn't think of that. How are you supposed to play a brass instrument with a mask on? You, you can't. It just it doesn't work. You, you're not going to be able to play a beautiful tune. And if it's interfering with the saxophone playing, well, the masks, they, I mean, I guess they just got to go. Somehow, this was the most sane argument I saw from people at this meeting. I mean, because she's not wrong. I mean, you can't really play the saxophone with a mask on. You'd have to take the mask down and then play it. Everyone else just talked about how they were dying, how the masks were literally making people drop dead in the streets. At least hers was accurate. You know, you, hey, she's not wrong. You can't play the sax with a mask on. If I'm being honest, all of these people and their words actually did speak to me and open my third eye to a truth. I now understand why insane fucking lunatics like this actually have some level of power and a voice in decision making. It's because they're the only goddamn troglodytes that leave their cave to go to these fucking meetings. This meeting lasted six and a half hours and the only people there were anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers. These fucking brainwashed idiots that still believe the tooth fairy is real waited six and a half hours just to go walk up to a mic for 30 seconds and regurgitate what they read on Facebook while being laughed at by the people they're saying it to. A normal rational person will be like, well, six and a half hours just to speak for 30 seconds and you know, get made fun of. Probably not worth the time investment. But these fucking people lack even the most basic cognitive functions to register what boredom is. So they will happily wait six and a half hours just to read some garbage script off their phone they wrote while fucking half blacked out on Xanax and wine. And then just, it's fucking, it's in incredible to me. And incredible is the wrong word. Terrifying is the appropriate word. These speeches are like fucking middle school debate club level shit. But, but yeah, anyway, uh, that's about it. So yeah, watch court cam. Is there a new court cam that I've missed? Let's see. I'll just go through here, I think. This might be easier. Man tries playing mind tricks with the judge. Ah, so he encountered a Jedi. Is that Nicolas Cage? Paul is here for driving under the influence and driving with a suspended license. He looks like the kind of guy. Sir, I haven't said for the court how I'm appearing today, well, sir. I'm not asking you yet. What does that mean? I can see how you're appearing. Like a meth addict. Sir, today I'm appearing as the agent and settler for David Hall. Oh, he's okay. cosplaying. Okay. My name sounds exactly like the defendant's, and I'm here to settle that matter today. <laughs> oh! So are you and David Hall one Interesting. Of the I'm not a person, I'm an individual. David Hall is a person, I am a private individual. Hall's legally Interesting. to say the least. But the judge- He's got us backed into a corner. May I individual? And I, I, I don't think hmm. I got you understand the so difference the between a person and an individual. Could you appear as a 19 year old boy perhaps if I ask you to? Correct. Correct. Just starts transforming his face like a polyjuice potion. And even the person spawned today for ten thousand dollars. Damn! Because the settler of the Slap the whole family. And the person continues to drive without a driver's license. Quick, substitute in somebody else. Ten thousand dollars. This time you're because Martha this Cranberry. Is a violation of his original bond. All versions of David Hall must remain in jail unless he can come up with the cash. Well, is there are any you, other? Are you asking me as the settler of the age? <laughs> hey, he's getting fucking blasted. Judge is bending him over and Sir, biting his fucking asshole off. Okay, I am not the person. person David Hall. Tell him he's not leaving jail either, all right? Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You have to be a really, really, a really insufferably camp. fucking dumb asshole to think sovereign citizen is a real thing. Just as a heads up. Thanks for the resub chills. It never works because it's not a real thing. If you say you're a sovereign citizen, you just get laughed at. Let's see what the most dramatic moments are. He's even got merch made. That was pretty cool. Be seated. Accused of killing two teens in 1993 when he was just 16. Holy shit. At that time, which became a key piece of evidence for the prosecution. 
The court has received. So did he actually kill them or what? Indicating that they've reached a verdict. Vegas has been on trial three separate times for this crime and has maintained his innocence throughout. After spending 18 years in prison, that verdict was thrown out in 2013. Holy shit. Because of ineffective assistance of counsel. And has remained out on bond as he awaited a third trial. During that time, he fathered two children. What the, the fuck? The prosecution continued to insist on his guilt. Verdict form B. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daniel Villegas, not guilty of... Hey! Oh, okay, so that had a happy ending, assuming he didn't actually murder anyone. If he did, then that's not good. We'll need to, uh, have a, have a hard think on that if that happens to be the case. years old. Good luck, kids. He fucking did it! It only took 18 years of his life! Madison's been convicted on three counts of aggravated- Jesus Christ! The killing and mutilation of three young women in Ohio. As part of the hearing- I thought these were gonna be goofy! These are fucking heavy! Madison Jesus Madison. Lord! Right now, I guess we're supposed to, in our hearts, forgive this crime. No! I, I hate that perspective. You don't Just forgive people down. like that. It's not- it's- it's not empowering, it's He's not dis demonstrating Madison. strength to forgive a murderer. It's ridiculous. Oh, fuck! That was a great jump! His- his airtime was nuts! He fucking took off! Van Terry is released without charges. A short time Thank later, God. County Judge Nancy- Michael Madison is sentenced to death and will now live on Ohio's death row. We start things off at the Russell I am so glad that guy didn't get charged. I am so fucking glad. I hate when like you lash out at someone like that and you get charged for it. It's fucked up. I haven't done anything to this court. Is she gonna lunge at him too? Fucking take off. You will serve 10 days for contempt of court. Go now. Oh, Jesus Christ! Make it 11 days. In a legal process. She, she handled that really well. Time. Damn, people really, like, lunge. No, I'm not. I'm not under oath. I raised your right hand when I swear in. Ooh! Blasted, get pranked. Oh, we've seen this. I recognize this guy now. No, you threatened my life the other day. I remember this. We did see this one. I don't remember what he does. Hmm, he's driving a hard case. The judge is handling this very well. Do you want to suck his dick for the water? He's so patient. Cook has accepted a plea deal that will drop a conspiracy charge, which carried a maximum penalty of life in prison. But what? carjacking, attempted carjacking with a deadly weapon, and felony battery are still in play. Damn, that's huge. I didn't know conspiracy was that seriously taken. There was an orchestrated ambush, and you are a main part of that. And for that, Oof. I'm going to go ahead and adjudicate you guilty of all three charges. Oh! 20 years in state prison. Damn! I mean, it is really avoidable. Don't set up a, uh, an ambush. Like, it's, it's super easy to avoid. Exit Prime Bomb. It turns out that Cook and her mother's reactions were so intense because they believed the plea deal meant no prison time. That's how they get you. Judge Foxman that's allows her that's to plea deals in a nutshell. Cook's sentence is reduced to 11 years in prison. Ah! Okay, so only <laughs> over half of her entire life so far. Where public defender Andrew Weinstock and his client are eh, to be fair, sounds like she deserved it though. Match with someone on Tinder, set up a robbery. That's fucked up. I'm not waving. That's not like a mistake you make. That is you being a psychopath. I don't need your help. Wow. I'm the public defender. I have a right to be here, and I have a right to stand and represent my clients. Damn. If you want to fight, let's go out back and I'll just beat let's your ass. Oh! <laughs> they both it is... head to the hallway what? behind the courtroom. Just out of the view of the court's cameras. 
Believe it or not, they get into a physical... Holy shit! ...until Judge Murphy returns to the courtroom alone. That is about the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. I will catch my breath. So you, you're fucking... Who's this Judge Murphy? You're telling me the public defender got to square off against the judge... In a legally orchestrated pugilistic fisticuff showdown at the, whatever this is, a Judge Judy dispute here or whatever. And the judge actually beat his ass and the cops didn't intervene at any point. That's incredible. That's fucking incredible. Judge Murphy, I want to see this guy. Is he jacked? Florida, oh, that sounds about right. Florida Judge, Judge Murphy. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Who is this mystery man? What the fuck? No, they removed him? Total lack of self-control? Come on! This is exactly how it should be. You got beef? Let's fucking settle it. That's great. I just want to see him, man. I'm not his fucking attorney. I just want to see what the guy looks like. Will he pop up in images? No way. This is what he looks like? This guy? Through hands? He wasn't, he wasn't dealing with, like, a pushover. Like, this is a big boy. God damn. All right. Hey. Hats off to him. Trial by combat. He's got that old man strength. I would like to get it done as fast as possible. Good answer. Doesn't help me. Now, if you can beat the judge in the fight, we'll reduce it even further. The Florida Judicial Qualifications oh. Commission, who charged Judge John Murphy with threatening to commit violence. It wasn't a threat. It sounds like he followed through. Engaging in a physical altercation yep, with counsel, the case eventually reaches the Florida Supreme Court. Which orders the immediate suspension Man, and permanent removal that. of Judge Murphy from his post. Thanks, the resub, humongous. If you can beat my goddamn lawyer in a fight, he wasn't a good lawyer in the first place. Washington, in the you beat my lawyer, you beat me. That's fine. Just neither of them. Oh, Steve from Blues Clues is out. Judge Buzzard springs into action, and it's on. Wait, the judge is going after them on foot himself. Two escapees are in handcuffs, and. Prison issue sandals. Oh, he ate shit. He's like the Terminator out here. This bright orange clue here. <laughs> He's just slow riding it. Made it to the third floor. Uh oh. Here he comes. Man, this guy loves and justice. Second, just one floor away from freedom. Oh God. Buzzard is gaining some ground. <gasps> Judge Buzzard, about to fucking eat him. Oh. The judge tackles the lagging defendant just outside the Damn exit it. to the building. Both have second degree escape added to yep, their there charges. There you go. I didn't try to escape to get out. I tried to escape to get well, and I tried to do what I could, you know, do what I could do to get my drug addiction. What? <laughs> heading out of Jackson, Michigan. <laughs> okay. I mean, court. I guess that makes sense. He was he was just running from the courthouse to rehab. He didn't want to wait. This man, Jacob Larson. This incident's a violation of a restraining order against Jacob. All those messages were like, loud, were like last year. Man, you really can't afford like a work, like a usable camera here. This quality is abominable. It's like a fucking picture of Sasquatch. Oh, four months early. Are there even people here? This is just like a video game glitch, like when you go out of bounds. You know what? I told you to leave her alone. And apparently that. Oh, please fight again. God damn it. I want to see it again. He's probably fucking your girl. What do you think about that? Do it. One more, one more, one more He's bluffing. He, he doesn't have the power. Over Facebook. You're, you're going to jail for a year in the county. 365 days county jail. What do you mean? You it's crazy how many people say you can't do that. He's the fucking judge. Like, what do you mean? This man can tell you you have to stand on a corner with your butthole flexed in front of a traffic light if he wanted to. Put your hands behind your back. Get to know you all too much. It holds true. The quickest way to tell when someone's an insufferable asshole is when they call themselves a good person or a nice person. That's how you immediately know that you will never like that person, and they certainly are not good or nice. As he pulls out what appears to be 
<gasps> he's going in! No one seems to notice until he's making a statement. He lights up, and this time it's noticed immediately. Oh, my! What, what, what a hero, my man! And on that day, weed was legalized. Taken away by the court officer, slapping Boston with a disorderly conduct charge, as well as another charge of possession. But he can sleep easy at night knowing that he was on the side of justice and brought change. The joint that changed everything. There's a lot of things that you can do, and your life doesn't have to be over. It is a useless law, but that was such a fucking dumb idea. Like, what do you, what did he expect? My God, he's so brave. That's it. I'm changing the law right now. Apparently, here's some snickering from Casal's family sitting in the gallery. What the fuck? You can go to whoever can sit here at a tragic moment like this and laugh and smile. No, throw her in jail. Fuck that. If I was a judge and heard that, she'd be going right to jail. Fuck her. You cannot come down what to a the piece of shit. call of justice. Ma'am, you are being taken into custody for criminal contempt. Your disruptive oh, fuck and yeah. disrespectful behavior disrupted today's proceedings. And you, ma'am, are going to the Wayne County Jail for 93 days for direct Woo! contempt. At, now that's what I'm fucking talking about. Well, it's been a while since I've had a full-blown justice boner, and that just triggered it. I wish it was more than 93 days, though. Donna seems to have learned a serious lesson from just one night behind bars. Don't you fucking dare let her out. In fact, laugh at her. Laugh at her. Laugh in her face. A hearty belly laugh. Ho ho ho. Ha ha ha. Judge reprimands father of 40, ch 40 children. Holy shit. 40? Next, we're in Miami, Florida, where Judge Nusheen Safi is about to Thanks recognize to Brian, a familiar name on her bond hearing docket. Johnny Ray Smith Jr. Oh my god. These two have a storied history, <laughs> and you're going to hear all about it. In that same case, Smith revealed to the court that he had fathered more than 30 children. God damn. She had, remember she was pregnant and she had another kid, so I'm at 40 now. Holy shit. All of a sudden, two people in the chat are like, wait a minute, it's my dad. No, listen. I never went back to the house. I never called. You didn't listen to anything I said. No, I did. I left. She seems a little interested. She's, she's playful with you. You might be looking at another 10 children coming up soon. Smith's charges today. As well as the allegations before the court at this point. Just make it clear that my history with him is no, as a no, judge. No, no, no. <laughs> There's this man. You're not staying there, correct? So what is he here for just to like <laughs> brag about how many kids he has? Condoms, use them. Okay. That's fucking for nuts. Fan of court 40 cam. kids. Subscri Holy shit. Man caught with drugs in the courtroom, huh? Filled with some kind of powder. He's not entirely sure what it is. So, he has it tested. He snorts it. It turns out to be cocaine. Jackpot. So the court... Are these the potential suspects? And this man steps up to the gate. Watch closely as he moves his hat. One more time. Why would he bring cocaine here and put it in his hat of all places? The worst place to put it. Thanks for being a fan of court cam. What a fucking horrible idea. That's like the one place and one hiding spot you would never want to use. Man gets a hundred days for sass in the judge. Good. Let's see the sass. I hope he earned it. Hey, he was just trying to sell his car. Next up is Michael Ray. He committed a crime just to plug his car. Four charges. Hey, thanks for the five gift subs. Everyone loves Ray. Thank you, Ray. You think that's funny? Sarcasm won't get him a reduction, and the judge lets him know it. I was lucky I didn't hold him in contempt. Ray just had his bond doubled. Nice, let's triple it. But as he re-enters the hallway... And then he can negotiate it down. Hold my 
This guy's watched way too many anime m moments here. He thinks he's like really badass. Ray's language isn't the only thing to upset the judge. According to court officials, the defendant also gave her the middle finger. When, sure enough, Ray comes back for more. <laughs> oh, here he comes. Sir, I'm holding you in contempt for what you did. What's the holding me in? And so. That's right. That that felt like something right out of GTA RP. He's done. I think we need to Yeah. Can we bring him back? Yes. What started out as four serious charges has grown into a grand total of ten. Nice, go for twenty, don't be a bitch. That, that definitely cut deep on the lawyer being called the useless like that. Thanks for being a fan of he didn't like camp, that. Where it's very early on a Sunday morning and all is quiet until. Oh shit! <laughs> I was I was expecting that, but I thought it was gonna be like a garbage truck. Their pickup right through the front of the building to steal an ATM machine just off camera. Oh. This is just oh, wow. a series of recent oh, break-ins involving I ATMs see. just as the truck hits the gas to dislodge the ATM. <laughs> With nothing more than what appears to be a bare cash deposit box, nice. the thieves come up empty and drive off. What do you mean empty? They, got, they were there for that little Three box. Three days later, after the courthouse boarded up the windows... <laughs> <laughs> This is some fucking straight up Tom and Jerry shit. Finish the job. Angel Lopez, Thomas Ortega, and Toby Perkins are arrested and charged with theft. Could they have woken the guy in the top left up for his mugshot at least? Thanks for being a fan of Court Cam. Subscribe to Holy shit. So they actually did get money out of them? Isn't it extraordinarily difficult to actually break into one of those? Like, uh, here, let me see. What would I type in to find that? Defendant throws backpack at judge and throws is capitalized, caps locked. Must be a hard throw. The next stop is the Cleveland Municipal Courtroom of Judge Marilyn Cassidy, Cleveland, Ohio. He walks up alone, carrying a backpack. Full of bricks. Just to launch at the judge. Oh. Uh oh. Ah! So it was right. He isn't going to do any of that. He's just going right to jail. He didn't lie. How close was the throw, though? By hurling his backpack at her. Oh, not even close. Hit the desk. Ducks and meanwhile, Carson punches public defender Ooh. David Eidenmiller, who just happens to be standing there in the back of the head. <laughs> He's then tackled by the lawyer. David feels real silly. His court officers come streaming in to help. I better get out of the way of this potential danger. Shit, I walked right into his fist. And that big mystery man who came flying out of his seat and over the defense. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Carson. Well, that's Cleveland Police Union President Steve Loomis. Oh, I was close. Happened. He's eventually subdued, cuffed, and led out of the courtroom. He's charged with contempt of court and sentenced to 30 days in jail. Only 30, you Thanks know? being a fan of court cam. Yeah, you, you know... Only 30 days for launching a backpack and punching an attorney? That's... You know, it, it could have been worse. That's... That's almost a fair trade right there. Like, you know, he, he kind of... He kind of came out on top of that transaction, really. Man escapes from courthouse and handcuff. Man, this happens so often. Oh, Good move. Security and re-entered the courtroom. He picks the locks on the handcuffs. He strips off his prison issue shirt. Wait, what he actually wait, he actually got the fucking handcuffs off? Uses it to hide his handcuffs. He makes it to the no, hallway wow. and after a quick look around and continues barefoot through the courthouse. This guy just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Until he exits, straight through the front doors and 
but within two hours, police catch oh, up with him. Oh, he didn't get very far. House. He went right to a friend's house, huh? Immediately taken back into custody. He looked pretty smart Actually, there for a minute with that shirt camp. play. I'll go to the one place they'll never expect me to. To my mom's house. It's too obvious, they'll never check. Man tries to escape courtroom. Next we head to Jefferson County. This is tier one Nick. Louisville, the prime suck. We are on the record. Once the testimony concludes, the camera, controlled by Judge Barry Willett, remains locked on the empty witness chair as the judge oh. announces his decision. And then a ghost comes in. in its entirety. That flash across the screen was Woodford making a run for it. <laughs> I was able to pick up on that. I, I was able to I was able to piece that puzzle together actually. That the man running was probably the guy. Pleading with her boyfriend to stop. Yep. I'm a huge Mass Effect fan, except for the ending of three. The ending is terrible. Up in the tussle to stop Woodford from escaping. Thanks for the reset, T minus. And I'm not sure. I'd have to think about it. Well, that's the first in 19 years on the bench. She did tackle him on the way out. Are you okay? <laughs> he sounds like Winnie the Pooh. Woodford's girlfriend requests Oh, well, I guess he did try and escape. How about some honey? Man gets tased in court while trying to clear his name? Ah, that sounds cool. We now head to the Nesbitt Courthouse in Anchorage, Alaska. That they had screwed me out of a plea deal, that the state had falsified evidence, and oh, it's a grand conspiracy. The game pilot and tour guide is seeking to clear his Jesus, name. he's even got a map. That is another felony. I, I don't think you're going to get these felonies to work. No matter how hard you stomp. Oh, shit. Oh, God. The taser wasn't on the map. Is that the judge? That looks like Slenderman. Who are we zooming in on here? Is that a cryptid? The judge opts not to intervene. <laughs> I've had enough with you crazy Alaskan people. I'm going home. Pig's attempt to clear his name continues. I think he did a pretty good job of clearing his name, if I had to guess. Like, I, I don't... You know, I don't think they're going to continue to look at him as a bad guy. I think he, overall, pretty good mission. Yeah, I mean, he took the map right out of Dora the Explorer's backpack, but it wasn't enough to convince the old judge there. He still got fucking blasted. Judge makes everyone go to jail for 30 days. Really? He was having a bad day. Back of the courtroom is Ingrid Berg. Hey, Ingrid. Defendant's wife. And sitting in the road directly in front of her is the victim's mother. Uh oh Gabbard. Ingrid's about to go nuts. Oh, Jesus, Ingrid! She just got clobbered. Oh, boy. Whoa, now. Oh, did she get involved, too? She's like 70 years old. Oh, the whole class is getting fucked. And where were those bailiffs, William? What do you mean? What? The incident ends with at least four people being charged with contempt. They were so behind. This guy had to completely separate them. Damn, William just said, I want to feel big today. I want to feel real big. I'm going to send this 90-year-old woman to jail for 30 days. See if she lives. That'll teach you to try and protect your daughter. The teen addresses the court. I would like to fight for myself. Uh-oh. It appears this young defendant... Uh-oh. 
but judge pulling a page out of Onision's playbook. That's a good idea. Very good, very That's good. Not a smart play. New York Yankees, and you've never even learned how to play baseball. That's fine. Yeah, but he, he's a, he, he goes on Reddit sometimes. Let him do it. Yeah, why can't we just let my son go to jail real quick? Fuck it. I don't even want to try. My job requires that I protect your constitutional rights. You as an American citizen. Oh god, he's going in. Holy shit, he's going wrong. Stupid to know what I'm trying to do is protect you and not spell it off you. Teen sues parents. Good. It's a broken family dynamic. And a good camera at this courthouse. Very interesting. And I'm asking the court to help her in this very difficult situation because they have <laughs> the dad just wrote down no chance and i believe that they are being negligent nope will not help uh oh One of the so it's a boy thing huh is that mom and dad don't approve of rachel's boyfriend why does he drive a sports bike phone call made by rachel's smoke mother, cigarettes is in this case thrown out she's 18 you're a real winner, aren't you? I really just want to all over your face right now. Anyway, I Oh, I see. Have a nice life. Jesus, okay, well then. strong words for the plaintiff. That's a weird thing to say to your parents. I want to shit all over your face. It's like an Xbox Live insult. Where the mother is calling the daughter the same kind of name, so I would go... The mother threatens the shit all over her daughter's face. They're the ones who raised this child. This is the language that they're using in their household. Interesting. Who, so who's shitting on whose face, then? The web runs deep. Are we going to, uh, A family that shits together stays together. In case any of you have been feeling a lack of self-esteem or a bit hard on yourself, I wanted to show you a video that will prove that no matter what's going on with you, you will never be as pathetic as the man I'm about to show you. This is a video that I've thought about for quite a while now. This happened in 2013. And I'll think about it and just remember, you know what? At least I'm not that guy. And hopefully it'll do the same for you. So this is an attempted robbery here by the ham burglar. He's doing us the favor of showing us his face before putting his mother's pantyhose over it. And then he comes back into frame looking like fucking Goofy here about to commit a felony. He's got a brick armed and ready. Launches that bad boy. It doesn't work. He panics, trips, falls a couple times, and then scurries off. One of the finest crimes our nation has ever seen. A smooth operation. This is up there with the Zodiac Killer when it comes to mysteries. In fact, this man was never caught. Probably because the detectives were too busy laughing at him, but they never did catch this man. He could be out there still terrorizing meat stores to this day. Throwing bricks, bowling balls, perhaps even dropping full grand pianos through them, Looney Tunes style. This menace is still out there. And this is all we have to identify him. And the only proof of his existence. It's like a cryptid. We basically caught the not-so-slender man here. This guy is fucking incredible at everything involving disasters. It is perhaps the worst attempted robbery ever recorded. He's actually kind of a pioneer when it comes to attempted robberies because this isn't the standard meta of robbing a place for money. Because this isn't a place where there would be any money in the shop or in the cash register. It's a fucking meat store. They only sell meat. So the only motivating factor here, the goal, wouldn't be money, it'd be more meat. Which is truly innovative, I would say, in the crime game. Just look at the way he's dressed. He looks like he's trying to audition to be a backup dancer in an old Bee Gees music video. I'd like to just play this one more time, start to finish here, because it's a masterpiece disaster. He must have just seen a brick as he was going for a midnight stroll and then hatched this genius scheme here to get some more meat. But it all went downhill when he was defeated by the vibranium glass door. Real shame.